Hello and welcome back to my channel. For this card, I am doing a video game inspired card. To start with, I am using images from Screen Time, Our Friendship Grows, Rub a Dub Dub. This stamp set, this is an exclusive so you can't get any more, but I just used the little star from it. I have Forest Feast, Beam Me Up, and for that one, I used the little flag. That was it. <laughs> and then I have Out of This World, I used the rocket. And then this Critters in the Sea, I used the turtle. Now, for several of these images, I stamped in jellyfish ink, which I forgot to show you. But I am making this rocket into the bullet from Super Mario. So I'm just tracing some of the lines. I'm editing them just slightly. I probably should have made it less pointy, but I left off the fins. And then for this turtle, I am just tracing around the shell and I am adding an extra little line into it. I'm also going to cut off the fins, the head, and the tail and add just like the little opening where the turtle head would come out of. For the tubes, I am turning these pots into the tubes and I don't need the tapered base. So I'm actually just going to take paper, you know, my makeshift ruler, <laughs> and I am going to make lines straight down from the tubes, well, from the top to make tubes. Yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> but these are things that I could draw. I could. But I wanted to use as many of the stamps and just edit them a little bit to get the desired result. Because I know not everyone can draw and I feel like it's less scary and intimidating when you have somewhere to start. So that's why I did that. For the flag, instead of making a square flag, I'm making a triangular flag. So I kept the bottom line and then the top one I just drew diagonally down from the top of the flag pole to the base of the flag. Also, I made that line to be the flagpole, but I didn't like it, so I actually just cut it off. I later just draw the flagpole on the card base directly. Now, here I am tracing out Mario's hat, or sketching out Mario's hat, I should say. I'm kind of using a little bit of a third-generation stamped image with jellyfish ink of that little boy as sort of a guide for how big and where exactly to draw the things on the hat. So you're not going to see the stamped portion of him at all. I do cut close to the line, so I wasn't really concerned with any of the extra little bits sticking out because masking those off or keeping from stamping them would have been kind of tedious, like with the turtle and all that. I just, I couldn't do that. So I had already planned on having no white outline. It was just going to be fussy cut directly against the black line. For the tubes, I am using several shades of green and then a yellow green just to help brighten up the tube so it doesn't look so dark. And I kind of just looked at a picture of some of the tubes from the game to get a sense of how exactly to color them. So it's darker on both sides and then lighter, a little bit off center. When I had first started, I didn't actually look at the picture very closely and I put a darker bit on the same side as the shadow. I mean, not shadow, the highlight. <laughs> and it didn't look very good. So I do go back in with my darker green to add a little bit more of a shadow on the side farthest away from the highlight. Now forgive me here, I do skip around a lot. I have some cool grays and I'm gonna do my bullet. I did need to make an eye on the bullet. I know I've seen some that had hands, but I was not going to try to draw that. <laughs> it's too small of an area, and I don't think it was in the original Mario's anyway. This card was actually inspired by one of my crafty friends who was making some Animal Crossing cards, and it kind of inspired me to figure out what kind of game I could turn into a card. And Mario, I've played it before when I was younger. I'm not really a big game player. I get dizzy. And lightheaded when I play games for really any more than probably five or ten minutes. So it's not something I can do very often at all. But 
it's not really, Mario's not really my type of game anyway. I would play probably a looter shooter game. <laughs> I like Borderlands. And I actually really liked Horizon. But I felt like those cards would be a little bit more difficult. They did cross my mind though. I did contemplate trying to make cards that were themed Borderlands or Horizon. Alright, back to my Mario hat. I did have to erase the lines because I didn't want to keep those there. Because once you color over them with Copics, the lines are stuck there. And I didn't want that. So here I'm just coloring Mario shirt in red. And then I'm going to move to the hat and do the same thing with the hat. As you can see, I'm getting a little bit messy with my markers today. They are getting out of the lines, but I wasn't super worried about it because I knew I would be cutting right up against the lines. And when I use my scan and cut, the lines, if you go out of them, it does matter, but you can cover it up pretty easily with the white gel pen. Here I grabbed my fine liner because I needed to make Mario look more like Mario. So I gave him a round nose and then I know you can't really see because of where my finger is. But I did give him his little mustache and I just colored it in solid black. This helped me color the skin a little better. I was having issues trying to color it and figure out where the nose would be versus, you know, his forehead or whatever. So definitely needed to add that first. Sorry for the extra noises today. I am doing my voiceover during the day. And the birds seem to be pretty happy outside right now. And yeah, I'm getting a lot more noise than I normally would. My intention was to do my voiceovers last night, but it got too late and I ended up not doing it. And then I thought I would do them early in the morning before the kids woke up. But then my husband's alarm didn't go off and my children slept until... Was it 6.45 this morning? It's rare for them to do that. It was nice, but didn't lead to a productive morning. <laughs> all right, for all of the colors that I used, if I do bring in additional colors, I show it on screen. But like for the green, I'm using the same greens I used on the tube. Alright, now here I'm coloring this mushroom, and I'm sad to say it did not make it in the final card. I wanted it in there, I really did, but I just didn't have space for it. Part of this was my fault because I did not add the middle little ground piece. I thought, I don't need that. I didn't really want to make the bricks for it anyway. Yeah, I kind of regretted my decision after that. Here's another place where I jump around. I started to color the coins and then I didn't really know what I wanted to do with them. So I moved to the star because that was pretty simple. I knew what I would have to do for the star. So I knocked that one out and then off camera I tested to see what I wanted to do for the coins before, you know, I wasted time showing you that and then having to cut it out later. For the star I did add the little eyes with my same fine liner I've been using. This is a Copic friendly fine liner. At least I believe so anyway. I've been using it and it doesn't usually bleed, although I did have some bleeding on some of the later images that I did. So for the coins, I just did a circle inside of the circle and then a little 
rectangle to kind of give it that coin shape. And then I had thought I would just skip the piranha plant, but then I felt like I couldn't. So I took this bubble from, uh, I don't remember what the stamp set's called. It'll be linked below, but I just used it for the circular shape of the bottom of the plant and kind of a guideline for where to put my lines. Again, this is not something I couldn't have drawn without the aid of a stamp, but I wanted to show you guys how you can use the stamps at least a little bit to get a specific look. So for the lines, I did trace them in pencil first because the eraser is my best friend. <laughs> and that way, if I messed anything up, I could erase it and then I could just put in the final lines with my liner and not have to worry about it. Now, for the little circles on the inside, I could have probably found some little circle stamps and did the circles that way, but it's just circles, so I left it just hand-drawn. And here, I'm coloring in the green part before I do the liner. I don't really remember why I did that. Anyway, I'm just making sure that I go slow with my lines because I know I tend to try to speed through things and then I mess things up. And this doesn't have to necessarily be perfect. And for the stem, I knew part of that was going to end up behind the little tube, so I didn't worry too much about what the bottom of the stem looked like. I did allow that time to dry before I tried to erase anything or color with my red markers because I didn't want it to bleed. So yeah, I think I probably gave it mm, four or five minutes to make sure it was dry enough because it will smudge if you erase too soon. Now I move on to this Charge Me Up stamp set and I use this tiny little square in it and I am making all of the little blocks. So the brick ones that, you know, he can smack into or run on and the ones that he runs on, the little yellow one and oh yeah, here I'm showing my pen that I've been using this whole time that I forgot to show before. And for the bricks, I'm just trying to make roughly even sections. Um, horizontally for the bricks and then I'm doing something similar with the vertical lines but I'm staggering them so the first and the third one will have the same lines and the second and the fourth one will have the same lines as each other this is pretty simple it's just a little bit time consuming and here yes I'm using a quilting ruler sometimes it doesn't really work for what I want it to you know use it for but it worked for this particular thing and here I am making the little shapes of the stones that he runs on. They all look the same, so they're all the same. It was kind of odd at first until I seen them all together, and then I was like, nope, that looks fine. The only brick thing that ends up being a different color is the yellow one. All the other ones I use the exact same colors in. And here, this one I had left for a little while and went over it, and you can see it smudged. I still continued with coloring it so you could see how I colored it. But this is why I went from showing you the lines to moving over to ones that I had already done the lines for to color because I didn't want it to smudge. And it's still smudged anyway. Alright, so here is my little blank block. And I am just taking my little fine liner and I am making not really circles, not really squares. But I'm doing one in each corner because that's what it looks like in the game. And then I'm taking these two yellows and doing... The same kind of thing I did with the blank block and just coloring it yellow. And then I'm going to take my E99 marker and I'm going to make the little question mark on it. And then after the question mark is done, I do add 
the same little not really squares not really circles at the corners and then I add kind of a, a shadow behind the question mark moving on to my back panel I'm just inking this up all with the same color blue I went darker than I would usually go just because it's a video game I'm actually really happy I didn't decide to go lighter I don't think it would have popped quite as much but yeah not normally a color I would use that harshly for a sky <laughs> Now here I have my little T-shaped pieces and the little hills. Now I'm cutting the top of the hills off so they do not pop over the little brick path things that I have made. I don't know exactly what they're called. I'm probably called them like three different things by now. <laughs> but, oh uh, yeah, the little pop-up base pieces. I didn't show you on camera. This is not patterned paper. It's yellow paper and I used a diagonal stripe stamp on it with a darker yellow distress oxide and the reason I didn't show it on camera is because I didn't know if I was going to go with that or if I was going to do a green one or a red one or a blue one I really didn't know so I took a chance picked yellow and stamped on it and then seen the pieces together and I actually thought it would look really good so I left it yellow but unfortunately that's not one I did on camera now I have glued all my little stones to the pop-up pieces and I am just going to attach the box together this was a struggle I had so much problems with this so many problems with this yep that's proper English <laughs> oh my goodness I had a lot of problems with it and I don't understand why because this at this point was the fourth platform pop-up that I've done I think I got too comfortable as you notice I didn't add the middle one in and then I realized that those needed to be attached together the two base pieces but I still messed up because I wanted to add things popping out of the middle but I didn't know that at the time so I was on the struggle bus for a lot of this card <laughs> it didn't help that I was trying to do it late at night and I kept getting interrupted you know a little bit later the next day when I was trying to work on it because my toddler was sick and yeah he was very clingy but anyway I'm gluing my pieces together so Mario is in one tube I've got this piranha plant in another and then I'm going to pop the bullet up because this is actually going to go in the center of the card. Because at this point I had already figured that much out. And I'm going to glue Mario into place. And I'm also going to glue the piranha plant into place. This again, like with my last card, just keeps it from like me from putting things in places that it's going to be completely lost from the front. Now there are certain things that you're not going to see when you look at it directly from the front. And you'll see it when you turn it just a little bit, but I didn't want everything to be hidden behind my main images. As that would mean that there would be large blank blue areas right between the characters. So I opted out of that. Now I'm adding the little, I don't even know what you would call that, platform? I don't know. With some of the different bricks, I added the star on top of it. I have tried to wedge my bullet in between the two platforms. That was kind of a pain. I have these little die cut clouds that I got from the platform pop-up add-on die set. I actually love these clouds. It's one of my favorite things about it. I'm not really sure why, <laughs> but I left those completely blank. I didn't add any kind of shading or anything to them. And then here's my little flag. I put it on the side because, well, it fit there and it seemed like that would be the end of the level. I added my little green face to it too. And then I added the details with the white gel pen. Now I'm just continuing to add things. There's another little platform on the side. I had glued the turtle shell in place. I had put a coin up there. I really wanted to do more than that, but I just couldn't fit it up there without it looking messy. All right, so here I have a blue, a green, a red, and a yellow. And I am just coloring my letters. These came from a die set that I don't think is available anymore. And normally I would try to avoid putting that in there because it's not available anymore but I did not have a small die set like this other than this one so I will try to find one similarly so that I can link it in the description box below All right here I'm taking my lobster red ink from Lawn Fawn and I'm just stamping the word birthday at the bottom so my sentiment is going to be super birthday I wanted to add have a before the super but I just didn't have any room for it I could have probably put it on the side panel, but then I would have had to figure out what to do with the other side panel, and it was this whole thing. I opted out of it. Now, I had lined up my letters on my work surface 
used some washi tape to pick them up and now I'm just laying them down on my panel to make sure that they're pretty straight when I adhere them. Now this is something I know I've seen other people do. I watched my friend do it recently and I'm like, duh, why don't I do that? <laughs> anyway, after I added my little sentiment, this card is complete. I hope this card inspires you to use your stamps in a different way. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back with another video soon. Bye!